Hey there YouTube, friends and guests, uh, this is JB checking in, giving you guys a quick update on my off-grid power system. Um, just letting you see where we are currently, we're already 100%, uh, it's right at 1 o'clock today, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on what we've done with the system, as you guys can see here, uh, 84 degrees inside the home, it's uh, the time of year where it gets cool, so we're running a, a heater in the bedroom, we're running a, a little heater inside the living room. We we now have this uh, off-grid center running with uh, <clears throat> more panels, but with that we've also increased what we use. We have an uh, upright frigid air freezer and two refrigerators that we're running. So our phone blew out from the wind. Okay. This is what I've been working on for the last day or two. Um, still burying the lines and still mounting the panels, but built this uh, little contraption here to hold up my panels um, that came down when we had that winter storm. You can see I'm still working on it. Putting an actuator on there so that I can have it lift up and go up and down. I've already buried my lines. Just got to get some more uh, piping to cover the electrical conduit down there. I concreted this one in last night. Waiting on it to set so that I can actually mount the panels to the, to the uh, frame that I built. Okay, so all together this brings us up to a little over 5 kilowatts of power. Um, not sure if you guys have seen this video, or at least me video this part, but also um, built a form of a pergola it's nice to sit under it get some shade we grill have a quick meal something to do during the day um, actually wiring it up to combine with those two new uh, sets of panels I built the wires are gonna travel in through here and go into that box and then go underground um, let me talk a little bit about my solar production and what we use it for <clears throat> I've been completely off-grid for a while now, but, you know, I, I've honestly watched a bunch of videos that tell you, you know, that it is difficult to get on-grid, and there, there's a fair amount of research that you have to do to be comfortable, or to be able to live comfortable. Um, recently, I've taken on um, some training and working um, on the side to, to become an energy auditor so that I can actually pinpoint where energy losses are so that I can reduce the amount of energy that we use. Now on any average day, you know, we, we can use between 17 and 20 kilowatts, um, typically from day to night in a 24 hour period. Um, be, but because of the fact that the sun comes up halfway through the day and then it lags into the next day, you don't necessarily see it on one day entirely, but um, you know, the big thing is, you know, you have to have a battery bank that's able to keep up with uh, the amount of usage you have at night before the sun comes up the next day and possibly even a couple of days of shade. Now with my uh, solar panels, my battery bank, um, let me give you some specifics on the battery bank. I have uh, three sets of batteries that are wired up for 48 volts all in uh, GC2 form. Um, about 225 amp hours a piece. That gives me a battery bank almost 700 amp hours um now that's at 48 volts if you multiply that times four you get the 12 volt version but the important thing is i want you guys to realize that um you need to have uh your batteries where you're only draining them down to about as low as 80 percent state of charge some people say 70 some say don't even go below 90 but for me I, i've found that the sweet spot was 80 percent and i rarely get below that <clears throat> But anyway, um, during the evenings, if you're running a heater or if you're running anything like that, you want to have thermostat controls so that you don't drive the depth of discharge down. We run cookers at night when we, you know, might cook up a casserole or my wife likes to bake in the daytime, but sometimes overnight she'll put on a stew or some black eyed peas or some greens or something like that so that they're ready by the next day when she's preparing lunch for herself. Um, 
But anyway, we have that battery bank rated to where it can handle that. Now, initially, we didn't have our battery bank rated for that. We had a 12-volt system, and then we staged it up to a 48-volt and found that the power wasn't enough. But our efficiency went up, our power usage went up, but we didn't necessarily upgrade the bank. So with the money we were saving from not paying a utility, we were actually able to buy um, the battery bank we have now, and it's been on free and clear for a while. Uh, the panels we bought were just... a uh, the matter of us saving money each month the utilities do not come here and uh supplement they don't buy from us unfortunately um i've been thinking about doing that since at about 11 o'clock my my big array turns off because it has nowhere for that power to go but um anyway you want to stage the battery bank to be able to, to produce the power that you need that's number one uh, number two if you're gonna um build an array you need to think about uh Basically, what you're putting into the batteries being capable of charging the batteries. Now, the batteries I have say that they basically need about 15 amps a piece. And I say that's a good rating for my uh, Trojans and any other battery bank. You want to have about 15 amps per, per uh, set to be able to charge, whether it's at 12 volts or 48 volts. Um, so, if it's at 48 volts, you want about 15 amps um, as a good number, let's say. You want to multiply that out, and that'll tell you your array size that you need to be able to provide power to that battery bank without uh, trickle charging it or um, causing you to have a low depth of discharge throughout the day because of you using energy and whatnot. So when I did my sizing of my array, I did it based off of those numbers and it helped me out. Um, like I said, my battery bank on a full uh, sunny morning or clear sky, sky day like today, I'll be full about 11 a.m. on a normal day where I'm still using energy and using heating and all those things, even in the morning, I'll still be full by 11, 30, 12. Um, if there are clouds in the morning, even yesterday it was very cloudy, um, foggy in fact, um, no no energy production um, in comparison to what it does in daytime. Uh, we were getting about 1.3 kilowatts uh, in a very foggy day. The sun was blocked out, but um, anyway, we were able to get full up by about one o'clock. So, you know, if you, if you, uh, are starting an array or thinking about going this way it's a good thing to do it's a good investment i don't feel like uh you know um this was a bad investment in fact i feel like this is going to last 20 30 years it's going to last past the equipment that i use to hold it um just in case i plan to upgrade or if i want to extend it out further but um it, it's going to last i mean you, you guys have to really shoot this stuff just to destroy it i did uh have a comment i wanted to throw in while i'm making this video i have one of my panels um it's actually one of my uh, panels that's on the pergola now. A 300 watt uh, Renergy panel. Um, the there's a uh, let me just show you. Let me show you. There's a piece here. I guess it's the the part that protects the uh, lines coming from the wire and where the fuses and things are held in there there's a part there that uh attaches to the mc4 cable that comes out or the solar cable that comes out that hooks up to your panels um for some reason i wasn't getting power out of a set of panels and what i ended up doing was calling into energy and figuring out what was going on and they they asked me to do some tests turns out they're not getting any power through it so they just sent me a replacement uh, no cost to me Used my receipts and warranty and it worked out great. I didn't even have to send the panel because they said it was more expensive to send it. Well, my old panel was able to be fixed, fortunately. And I have it here. It's basically set up to charge up my old battery bank um, just to keep it in float mode until I figure out what else I can do with it. Um, it's actually a bad set of batteries. But like I said, I didn't want to waste it, so I just used that panel on that. I was able to power it. It turns out the reason that panel wasn't working was one of the connectors that held to the uh, MC4 connection actually just kind of ripped off. Um, so I was getting low amperage, and then I was getting no amperage when it finally just corroded. Um, not sure how that happened, other than the fact that it was loose. Um, but regardless, I bought some uh, some silicon paste or some dielectric grease. Um, it cleaned up the oxygen in there and made it to where it had a direct connection and I haven't had an issue with that panel since. Get full power out of it. 
Uh, so anyway, speaking on the panels, you get great warranty depending on who you buy from. Just stick around with the companies that have been around for a while. Renergy has been around for a long time. Yeah, they're Canadian based, I believe, but that warranty program is just um, it's unheard of, especially since I bought the panels three years ago. They have a 25 year warranty on them, but three years ago I bought those and they're still holding up and they're still willing to replace them as if I bought them day one ago. So anyway, YouTube just wanted to check in. If you guys have any questions, comments, please put them on the uh, page and I look forward to reading them and replying to them where they apply. Thank you for watching my video. Have a great day.